I'm Steve Kosky, host of Papa Steve's Rebel 1100 Garage, where we show do-it-yourselfers how to maintain your motorcycle. Let's get greasy. If you weigh substantially less than I do, 205 pounds, then you may not need to tweak your Rebel 1100's suspension preload. Honda engineers surely tested the bike's suspension for a variety of rider and rider passenger weights, including a chart in the Rebel 1100 owner's manual showing preload settings for typical load weights would be helpful. Here's my go at it. Unfortunately, I know only one weight, my own, teetering on the seesaw between overweight and obese. So what's the deal? Your Rebel 1100's front shocks have 4.8 inches of maximum compression before they bottom out. Unless you hit a really deep pothole or failed to notice that tank trap size speed bump before you careened over it at 45 miles per hour, probably you are not going to bottom out the front shocks. However, the rear shocks carry more of your weight than the front shocks, and the rear shocks have only 3.7 inches of maximum compression. Consequently, the Rebel 1100 rear shocks are easy to bottom out if set to their three-click factory preloads. What happens is that even a modest road bump pushes the shock piston deep into the shock tube. The shock tube slams into the rubber bumper at the bottom of the piston shaft, then abruptly stops. That's when that modest road bump drop kicks your motorcycle between your kidneys and bounces your buns off the saddle. If moderately rough roads routinely bounce you off the saddle, then adjusting the rear suspension will sweeten your ride. Whether or not you weigh in at my 205 pounds, Testing whether your rear suspension stiffness is appropriate for your bolt is quick and easy. Here's how to do it. First you need four 8-inch zip ties and a routine ride on your Rebel 1100. You'll use the zip ties to mark the deepest compression of each front and rear shock during your ride. 8 inches is longer than you need, but the extra length makes the zip ties easier to install. Second you need a compact pair of wire cutters to snip the excess zip tie after you attach it. Later, you'll use the same tool to cut off the zip ties after you've learned what you need to know about your bike's suspension. Instead of wire cutters, I use spring-loaded toenail clippers because they fit easily between the spring coils around my rear shocks. Let's get started. Wrap the zip tie around the quarter inch diameter chrome rod that penetrates the rear shock tube. Do the same on the front suspension. The front shaft is a 1 and 3 8 inch diameter black powder coated tube that slides up and down into the body of the fork on each side of the front wheel. Pull the zip tie tight enough that it won't slip down the shaft on its own, but loose enough that you can still slide it up and down the shaft. Now, snip off the zip tie's excess tongue. It doesn't hurt to leave a quarter inch or so sticking out of the zip tie lock. On the rear shocks, slide the zip tie to the top of the chrome strut until it stops against the bottom of the shock tube. Go the other way on the front shocks. Push the zip tie down until it rests against the top of the shock tube. Do steps 1 through 5 for all four shocks. Now comes the fun part. Go ride your Rebel 1100. Cruise the roads you typically travel. 30 minutes is long enough, but you have Papa Steve's permission to ride until you succumb to butt fatigue. After your ride, Inspect the zip ties. Each will have moved to the position of maximum shaft compression for that ride. 
I'll make two predictions based on my experience. One, the zip ties on your front shocks ended up well short of maximum compression. Two, unless you kickbox in the bantamweight class, the zip ties on your rear shocks have become embedded in the rubber bumper at the bottom of the chrome shaft. When I performed this simple test on my Rebel 1100, the front shock tubes pushed up the zip ties 3.5 inches, comfortably short of the 4.8 inches maximum compression. However, the rear shock bodies pushed the zip ties inside the rubber bumpers. So what did I learn? I found out that for somebody my weight, my front shocks have more than enough travel to avoid bottoming out because of exaggerated bumps in the road. However, my rear shocks needed to be stiffer. In technical jargon, I needed to increase the rear shocks preload. Increasing the rear shocks preload will lessen the frequency of bottoming out, keeping your kidneys content and helping your buns stay parked on the saddle. The rear shock absorber's preload is set to three clicks by the factory. According to Honda's service manual, you can adjust the preload by as many as 18 clicks. I watched a YouTube video where the Rebel 1100 owner tested the number of available settings by cranking the adjuster as many as 20 clicks. Regrettably, he often lost count while taping his video, so the exact number of clicks is not entirely clear. He warns, though, that cranking the adjuster too far can unscrew it off the end of the shock absorber. Screwing the adjuster off the end of the shock absorber doesn't sound like a good thing. You don't need to crank the preload 18 clicks as long as your weight is not too different from my 205 pounds. I don't have any information about how many clicks you might need to set the preload if your weight or your weight combined with your passengers approaches the 348 pounds that Honda says is the Rebel 1100's load limit. Both front and rear shocks of the Rebel 1100 have easily adjustable preload. So let's fix the problem. You have a tool in your Rebel 1100 toolkit that is intended for adjusting your shocks. You probably already know this but your toolkit is under your saddle. You unlock your saddle by pushing the key all the way into the spring-loaded ignition, then turning it clockwise until the seat unlatches. Then lift off the seat and retrieve the toolkit. Take out the suspension preload adjustment tool and slide it into its handle. The shock absorber adjustment sprockets are located just above the two coil springs on each side of the rear tire. To help protect the cool black adjuster finish, place a small plastic bag over the business end of the adjustment tool. If your zip tie test indicates your rear shocks need more preload, start by turning the adjuster two clicks. Use the same setting for both rear shocks. Next, reposition the zip ties to the top of the chrome shafts, then test drive the Rebel 1100 again. After your ride, inspect the new position of the zip ties. If you still need more preload, turn the adjusters two more clicks, reset the zip ties, and test ride the bike again. Repeat this process until the zip ties indicate that the rear shock absorbers do not routinely bottom out.
I adjusted each shock on my Rebel 1100 to six clicks of preload, in addition to the three-click factory preset. Here's an embarrassing aside. You might succumb to the same septuagenarian scenario that I did. I lost track of my count while adjusting my left shock preload. Who would suspect that counting to two could be a problem? So here is what I did to match the settings for both shocks. I turned the adjusters for the two shocks counterclockwise as far as they would go to set the minimum preload. Next, I turned the adjusters clockwise until I found the first click. Because I knew the factory preset is three clicks, and I wanted to add six clicks, I tightened the adjusters nine clicks on each side. When you are satisfied with the amount of preload, snip off the zip ties. Here are five more observations about the rear shocks. 1. The ride will feel stiffer, but the adjustments will have eliminated most of the kidney pounding jolts caused by bottoming out the shocks. 2. When you carry a passenger, you should set the preload higher. Running the zip tie test with a passenger is the most accurate way to find the appropriate setting. 3. If you set the preload too high, you may wish you were wearing a kidney belt. 4. I haven't seen any commentary about this, but I assume that it's okay for the shocks to occasionally bottom out. 5. I want to know what your tests show for you by yourself and for your combined weight while carrying a passenger. Send me your results in a comment so I can add the data to my chart and share it with the YouTube universe. I will close with this final remark about the front suspension. I adjusted the front suspension preload on my Rebel 1100, one half turn for each fork. Even though bottoming out the front suspension is not a problem, the stiffer suspension reduces the fork dip when you apply the front brakes. To change the preload of the front shocks, turn the adjusting screw at the top of each fork. The screw doesn't have a locking nut. Clockwise makes the preload stiffer. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd be delighted if you would subscribe to Cruising with Papa Steve. If you don't, I'll be just another codger talking to himself on the internet.